Good morning. So I was surfing the site, and I was just doing my thing reading, and this by Becca Waits jumped out at me. Esther in the bell jar, and then I went to here, and this is a challenge by Shells. And giving it a go. A fictional character from any book, any genre, that you identify with. Explain who, why, and whatever else y'all want to say. So, love us some shells. So thanks for this challenge. This is a really cool challenge. And, um, Drake Dyer, 05. Realistic relation with fiction. And he's, his is Sal Paradise from On the Road by Kerouac. And he's a, I think Drake, Drake is a, let's see. I think he's that young feller. Yep, 18-year-old writer. Look like at a nice kid, though. Look at that. Nice watch. I love watches. I have a thing with watches. I have a, I have a bull of a, but I never wear it these days, but I'm going to start wearing it again. He's a high school senior. He absolutely loves to write and read every day. Well, good for you. Good for you. I've, I've welcomed you before, but welcome. Midnight stars, reflection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, this is cool, Shells. And there's Diana. Yeah, there's so many. She, I agree. I agree, there are so many. And this is where I was with Becca Waits. Uh, even though she was from a different era and my circumstances varied greatly from hers, I understand her soul. Yeah. Yeah, me too. It's a, it was a fucking great book. And uh, Dionysian 66, one of my favorites too. Well, one of my many favorites on prose. It's hard to have a favorite, right? Great right. I absolutely love Sylvia Plath, yeah. I have all of her works, letters, and everything else that's been published about her. Yeah, the letters, I have a, I went through a phase, speaking of this guy, I went through a phase, uh, Dionysian, where I was, I was only reading letters, and from, you know, from writers that have, you know, gone before us, and it was, uh, it was really interesting to see, like, just kind of, um, See, not just only how much I related to their writing, but how much of their, um, I don't want to use the word like neuroses or, uh, there's no, there was no, um, whenever you mention a disorder, it sounds so precious for the writer, it's, but it was nice to read, um, somebody else had, you know, that thing of ours. So it was cool to see that. Okay, so I'm going to link this entire challenge. So whenever Dusty Grind posts anything on prose, I read it. And this is from our challenge uh, we just posted yesterday. and Or day before, but technically yesterday. And so this is what remains. And this is about, of course, going back in time with your smartphone. And... um this is cool. It's a, he made this, the header here is a transcript. It's a voice file. And this is really cool. So I just love this. Today is July 5th, 1984 or 2024, depending on how you look at it. Shit, I might have fucked up. I need to get the SD card from my phone into the safe deposit box. I was told to use as a drop. This Galaxy 5 seems to be working fine. Well, at least the installed apps still work. If the worst happens and I don't make it back, at least my message will. At least, I hope so. I know the jumping back in the time stream doesn't stop it from flowing. Every day I spend here is a day gone by there, so I don't have to worry about feeling older when I get home. I also know that the big red button on my phone screen is supposed to initiate the tunnel's homing mode. I'm not sure how that works, since there are no 5G towers here. Like Elton John's Rocket Man, I don't understand all the science behind the tunnel. 
It's just my job. Like I said, I think I fucked up. When I landed here, I discovered that there are some problems with our assumptions. My memories have now changed, but I'm not sure if they are subjective or actual. This shit hurts my head. Anyway, I needed to know if I could influence anything that mattered, but I wanted to do it carefully. I remembered a softball game I was in on the 4th that year, or this year, or whatever. I decided to see if I could change one small play by distracting the biggest jerk I ever knew, Tommy Wilkers. He scored the winning run against my team that day and gloated about it all year. When the big asshole started to swing at the last pitch, I screamed, Miss! He checked his swing and missed the pitch, but every eye on the field looked toward me, including my own. I jumped up and bolted down the bleachers, pushing people out of my way and making one little girl cry after spilling her popcorn. The thing is, I now remember that day and the weird guy in the baseball hat and sunglasses who made that little girl cry. The pitch had been ball three, and Tommy had smacked the next one out of the park. I ran for at least 15 minutes. The weirdest part was the black van that showed up after that near the alley I was hiding out in. It was still there this morning, so I ducked through the Chinese restaurant, but that same van seems to be following me. Maybe I'm paranoid, but I think there is someone, some group or something, monitoring the time stream. I hope not, because I could have put us all on their radar. If so, I am sorry. I just pray I can pick this card up myself in about 40 years. Note. Agent Salisbury was lost on tunneling mission 4. No sign of him was ever found, but this SD card appeared on the Dropbox on August 3rd, 2024. All records of that mission are being scrubbed, and his family will be compensated by anonymous donation. So Rose Tempest commented, First of all, I commend you for finishing this challenge so quickly. Secondly, I love this. It was such a good idea to make this a voice log. Yeah, it was. She's right. Thirdly, love how you tied in the time travel with one of Salisbury's memories. The ending is a nice touch and has such a haunting feel to it. Very well done. And Dusty replied, Thank you, at Rose Tempest. Not the first time travel flash I have written, but I kind of liked the way it turned out. Here's hoping the temporal police or whoever they are never finds me. That's really good. That's really good. Dusty Grind. I love this writer. When you are spotlit, my dusty grind friend. What a cool last name too, grind. So that's going to wrap today. I just wanted to jump on here and say thanks to Shells for this great challenge and to Becca Waits for that. The read I read, I didn't read it on the, on the channel today, but it's a good read. Read that challenge and to dusty grind. Thank you, man, for that great entry. It's our first one in that challenge. So I really, really liked it. It's early, but I'm going to walk the dogs. So I will see you all in the next video. Take good care.